So you're considering making a move to Tampa Bay, Florida? Well, don't do it. At least not until you watch this video first. In all sincerity, Tampa has been an incredible place to live and raise my family over the last five years. There are, however, a few things I wish I knew before making that move. In today's video, I'll share the 10 things I wish I knew before moving to Tampa with the goal of making your decision easier and far less stressful. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'm also going to share the household items that you cannot live without here in the Sunshine State. If we've never met before, my name is Juan Alcala. I make videos that are all things Tampa Bay, what it's like to live here, what it's like to work here, what it's like to play here, the food, the dining, the outdoors, the beaches, and the sunshine. I'm also a licensed real estate agent and I help people just like you buy, sell, relocate, and invest here in the greater Tampa Bay area. So if you're into that type of thing, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click that little bell. That way you can be notified every time we drop a video like this. And if you get a bunch of value out of today, do not hesitate to save this video. What I have found is my clients find it very, very convenient to come back and watch the save videos because they're doing their homework on whether Tampa Bay is gonna be the right spot for them. And more importantly, what place matches their ideal lifestyle. And that's what we're gonna get into today. So let's get after it right now. So the first thing I wanna do is give a little geography lesson because not everybody is familiar with the greater Tampa Bay area. So if you've never been here before, Tampa Bay is located on the Gulf of Mexico in the west central region of the state of Florida. If you weren't aware, the state of Florida is a very large state. There is a lot of land to cover here. And if you were gonna drive to Orlando, that's about an hour and a half to two hours away from Tampa, or an hour drive north of Sarasota, or about a three hour drive to Jacksonville, Florida, and four and a half hours drive to Miami. If you wanna drive all the way down to Key West, that's gonna take you about seven hours. Now, if you drive all the way up into the Panhandle, that Destin area, it's an entirely different climate up there. So this is something to take into consideration. And the reason that I bring that up is because sometimes, you know, when, when, when you live in Florida, people will say, hey, I'm in Florida, let's hang out. And they're in Miami and you're in Tampa, and that's a four and a half hour drive. Most people aren't down with that. So it's something to take into consideration. And while we're on the topic of driving, let's get into the first thing I wish I would've knew about, and that is traffic. The first thing to understand about traffic in the greater Tampa Bay area is it moves pretty slow. Now, I know we don't even rank in the top 20 in terms of like terrible traffic around the nation. And I lived in Metro Detroit, traffic was pretty rough up there. We would go to Chicago, that's a whole nother planet. And I've been to areas like Los Angeles, Chicago, you know, uh, the Northeastern states where traffic is almost unbearable at times. And while it is busy here, it is nowhere near to that level, but it's still something to take in consideration because our road system is older. It wasn't built for the amount of people we actually have living in the greater Tampa Bay area right now, which is somewhere around that 3.3 to 3.4 million people in the greater Tampa Bay area. That's a lot of people. And the infrastructure wasn't quite built for that many people to be on the road. So at peak traffic times, it can definitely get really congested, especially when you get down into that uh, I-275, I-4 interchange downtown. But the other thing that throws you off when it comes to traffic is how long the lights take here. <laughs> it was a huge adjustment for me. And I tell people all the time like you can literally weave a blanket at a stoplight not really but it feels that way you can definitely respond to emails and text messages and i'm not advocating for anybody to be on your phone but that is how long you are at a stoplight here it is intense and the reason part of it is a we have a lot of people that live in the greater tampa bay area that's one but it's the way that they time the lights um, where I moved from, typically both intersections across from each other would go at the same time, right? You would turn left at the same time. But in the state of Florida, for whatever reason, especially in the greater Tampa Bay area, I don't live in other areas, but in the greater Tampa Bay area, we tend to let an entire one-way section go. And we'll let you, you know, if you're headed northbound, the entire section goes northbound at once and the other three sections of the, the road just wait there. You get to turn left at the same time and it takes a very long time because of this. Sometimes these lights are a minute and a half to two minutes long before you get to make a move. And imagine that times three. <laughs> right? As you're waiting for your turn to be number four, it can take some time. So keep that in perspective. The other thing when it comes to traffic is there are a lot of people that move here from other areas. It feels like seven out of 10 people who live here are not from here. So keep that in perspective. But what that really means is people bring their driving habits with them. If you're used to driving a certain way in, in um, 
in northern Wisconsin or New England or uh, Los Angeles and you come here and how the roads are used are different, what happens is it takes people a little time to get out of those, those driving habits and man, it can create some chaos. So when it comes to the traffic here in the Greater Tampa Bay area, here's my recommendations. Keep your head on a swivel. Driving is a full contact sport um, and you just need to be mindful of it, right? So just buckle up. It's gonna take you longer to get places where you thought and the, the awesome comment that I get all the time when people reach out to us is, where we live to go 30 miles takes 30 minutes. Well, it's not like that here. And the closer you get to the beaches, the longer that drive time is gonna be. 12 miles on the beach, 35 minutes. It can literally take that long. So just keep that in perspective. Now, the second thing I wish I would have knew was exactly how hot it gets in the summer. Because I'm gonna be honest with y'all, it is relentless is the word that I would use. Um, while I would rather sweat any day of the week than be cold ever again in my entire life, and we're having a, a cool spell right now, it literally was 48 degrees this morning and Floridians were losing their minds. And I know some of you are laughing hysterically, but that's reality here, okay? Um, it is uh, November 29th um, and it's cold. It is, that's cold for us. We typically do not have those types of temperatures often, right? 10 days maybe out of the entire year, but we're getting one of those snaps early. But on, conversely, on the other side, it gets very, very warm in the summer. I mean, July, August, September, our average temperatures are 90 plus, okay? They don't usually get into 100 degrees because we're pretty close to the Gulf of Mexico. So I, I don't even know that I've seen a 100 degree day that we've been here in five years. But not only on that, it gets extremely hum humid also. So you got to keep that in mind when you come here because it is going to be an adjustment. The heat is one thing, but the humidity is another, and it's not for everyone. We have eight and a half months of incredibly beautiful weather. And I mean beautiful, sunshine galore, all the things you would want. But we also have that really hot, humid uh, phase in the summer. And it can be really, really tough on people. So just keep that in mind if you're considering making a move to Tampa Bay, because I got to be honest with you, it is hotter than you think for longer than it feels, right? And it's almost like... Um, uh, the powers that be have walked over and kind of turned on an oven with a water pan in it during the summer, and it doesn't stop, even at night. I mean, it gets down to like 83, 84 degrees at night. There's no reprieve, okay? So just keep that in mind when you're considering making a move here. Again, the eight and a half months, I wouldn't trade it for the world, but you better be ready. A lot of people take vacations during that time of the year. They go to the mountains, they go back up north if that's where they're from, and it gives them a lot of reprieve, and that's what I would recommend doing too. Number three on my list is service can be slow. Um, and when I say that, please bear with me. I was in the hospitality industry for 10 years. Um, I don't think I know it all, but I was very used to a certain cadence and a rhythm of, of service when it went to, you know, to restaurants and it went when we would go shopping to places. And there's a thing about Southern hospitality. It's real, first and foremost, which is awesome. There are people who say please and thank you here more than there were what I, where I was from. It doesn't mean that everybody's good or bad. I'm just sharing this with you, right? But the thing <laughs> that is extremely different is the pace. People tend to move slower. Now, this, there's this old adage about, well, it's hot in the South, so people move slower. They talk slower, they move slower. This is just real. And if you're gonna come from areas that are hustle and bustle and busy, it's gonna be an adjustment for you, just like the traffic. So please keep that in perspective um, for your mental well being and for others as well. I remember when we first moved down here, uh, there's a Starbucks right, at, right in our neighborhood. I went in for coffee and I was in line and there were people in front of me and the cashier was talking to everyone. And it was probably the third or fourth person in and I started catching myself getting frustrated. And um, you can judge me right now because I judged myself during this time period too. And I found myself getting frustrated. And I'm like, and then I started thinking about it. I was like, well, wait a minute. I want to go places that are hospitable, that people are cordial, they're nice, they, you know, they're happy to see you. And here I am whining because my latte is not coming fast enough. And listen, I know, hit me up in the comments, guys. I understand, right? I'm just being real, but I was used to a different pace. And that's what started, was really throwing me off there. And it took some time to get used to that. Now, do I think that service is as good as a whole as it was back up north? In certain spaces, yes, and that's where we tend to spend our money, but there are other places where it just seems slower to me. And again, I'm not from originally from Florida. I understand not everybody loves that, but I just wanna share with you guys because if you're used to hustle and bustle, busy pace of life, it is going to be an adjustment on the speed of service. Um, and, and again, quality, you know, you have challenges everywhere you are, but 
get used to a slower pace because it's just the way of life here. Number four is Red Tide. And while we did not have a huge problem with Red Tide this past year, we've been here for five years now and two of the five have been pretty rough. Red Tide is an algae bloom. I'm, you know, I'm not a biologist. I can't get into all the details here, but here's what happens ultimately. And this is how it was explained to me. You know, we have these beautiful green lawns here in, in the great state of Florida. Everybody loves a great lawn. Most people do as well, but it takes a lot of fertilizer to get that thing going. Well, our elevation here in some places is just above sea level. And when we have heavy rains, like we have here in the state of Florida, the runoff has to go somewhere. Well, it goes into the Gulf of Mexico. When you mix that with the warm body of water that already has natural bacteria in it, you can have these algae blooms. Now there's a lot of other factors, y'all. I'm, I'm not here to, to try to teach anybody on it. But what happens is these algae blooms become pretty, um, well, they become dangerous at some level. They kill marine life literally by the tons. It, it is an, it, it's an awakening that I was not prepared for. And it's also very difficult on your respiratory system. So what ends up happening is if you've got really bad red tide on your beach, you basically give up your beach or you go down and you try to deal with it. And I don't know about you, I'm not interested in going anywhere where I feel like I have to cough all day. And that's basically how it feels. It is very interesting. Now, I shared with you, we've been here for five years, okay? And it's happened two out of the five. Does it make me want to move? No, but does it stink? Yes. Right, so, um, but literally and figuratively. So keep that in perspective. Um, if you are very sensitive to respiratory situations, this is something to take in consideration before you ever consider making a move to the area. Um, if th things like that tend not to bother you, then again, I wouldn't let it uh, affect me one way or the other. I would still buy a big old house on the beach. It would not change me from doing that. You just have to make some adjustments. It's part of life living on the Gulf Coast. So the fifth thing I wish I would have knew before moving to Tampa Bay is that our housing is definitely unique. And what I mean by that, it is extremely diverse. We have brand new homes out in areas like Wesley Chapel, Odessa, San Antonio. If you go down to Parish, uh, Riverview, you know, they're building a lot of new homes in those areas, which is awesome. If you go ahead further south, you get into Lakewood Ranch. I mean, there's some beautiful places with new construction, all the things you would ever want. But most of those places are pretty far away from the beach. And the closer you get to the bay, the closer you get to downtown Tampa, the older the homes get. Um, and the closer you get to the Gulf of Mexico, the older the homes get as well. You know, Tampa was established a very long time ago, over 150 years, it started getting really busy. Um, you know, a lot of the housing was built in the early 1900s in St. Pete and Tampa. So you've got these old, beautiful craftsmen and bungalow style homes. I mean, they're gorgeous, lots of character, but but that comes with some challenges. Now, there are new homes in Tampa. Make no mistake about it, in South Tampa, you can get that, but it's there seems to be no really in between. You either have a beautiful, brand new contemporary home, or you have a home that is at least 50 or 60 years old, if not 100. So keep that in mind when you come down here. And for the longest time, Clearwater, St. Pete, Tampa, this area was treated and, and pretty much was a second home region, especially when you get to the Clearwater and St. Pete near the Gulf of Mexico. You know, the beach communities are definitely a lot of second homes. I mean, there's more homes here with two bedrooms than I have seen anywhere elsewhere. It's fascinating to me, but a lot of this area was built in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. So you'll find these homes, but they haven't been renovated. And that's what I was trying to get to here more than anything else. Like you're going to find a lot of home with that old square white tile bathrooms that are you know have been done in the 60s and 70s or people made renovations in the 90s and early 2000s and haven't touched them since so just keep that in mind when you see homes here that have been fully renovated that are up to date those homes are going to go quick and they're not going to be cheap so keep that in mind those homes tend to sell very fast in the greater tampa bay area and if you have questions about moving to the area do not hesitate to reach out to me and my team i put all of my contact information in the description down below. Heck, there's even a link to my calendar so you can schedule a time that's most convenient because there are a lot of questions that need to get answered when you're looking at making a move here. One of the biggest concerns we have right now is about insurance. And while I know insurance wasn't one of our um, specific topics here, it is important to cover because our auto insurance doubled when we moved to the state of Florida and homeowners insurance has been 
a humongous issue here in the state. Now, I feel pretty fortunate. I live less than two miles to the Gulf of Mexico. We're in a non-flood, a non-evacuation zone, and I pay $2,500 a year for my homeowner's insurance. I have a four bedroom, two bath, 2,000 square foot home with a pool less than two miles to the water, and I pay 2,500 bucks. Now, I know some of you are like, that's an outrageous number. But in the state of Florida, that is very inexpensive. Um, we feel extremely blessed, but I have clients who have bought on the water that have homes that are uninsurable. They are self-insured. So this is something you need to be aware of, right? In ideal world, you would stay out of a flood zone, you would stay out of an evacuation zone, hurricane evacuation zone, and your home would have a new roof, new windows, new AC, and you would get really good insurance rates. And this is another reason why people are choosing to buy newer homes and further away from the coast, because they're in these non-flood, non-evac zones, and they're built to today's standards, you know, with hurricane windows and all types of things. And they get great insurance insurance rates on these big, beautiful properties. So just keep that in mind. Like I said, if you've got questions, do not hesitate to reach out to me and my team. So number six on our list is the water is terrible. <laughs> and I don't just mean it's bad. I mean, our water is terrible. Anyone you ask, right? Pick up a phone, call anybody, say, hey, how's the water in the state of Florida? They will tell you, it is not good. And I'm spoiled, I recognize that. We moved from the Great Lakes State, we had some of the best water in the entire country, right? It makes good beer, it makes good pizza, it makes good pasta, right? It makes great bread. Good water equals good food. And when you have hard water, you know, with, with a bunch of limestone in it, it can be very challenging. And here in the state of Florida, our water is not great, okay? Um, you have to have water filtration systems on your properties in order to get quality water in your home. A reverse osmosis system is definitely something I recommend. Also having a water softener because the water is super hard here. Um, when we moved into our home, immediately it started build, the glass started to change colors and I hadn't ever experienced any like that before and it's because of all the extra minerals that are in the water so we added extra filtration at all of the the showers and things like that too just to help with that cause but Overall, the water's not great. It's it, Sometimes it, I feel like you can chew on it when you're at a restaurant. And it's just like order bottled water, y'all. And, and um, if you're going to drink bottled water or drink water in your home, make sure that you're using some sort of filtration system. Trust me, you want to do it. Number seven on our list is bugs and pests. All right, now, when I say pests, that is a very general category. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to do my best to break this down here. But let's start with the bugs because that was an adjustment for me moving from a northern state where um, things either hibernated all winter or they were killed off because we had a frost. You do not get a frost here. We are a subtropic climate. And that means that you don't get that reprieve. You also have people who decide they want to let go of pest in, in, in the Everglades. And you know, you got snakes wandering around. It's just crazy stuff. Now, where I live here in the greater Tampa Bay area, I've seen one snake in five years, and that was the garden variety. Okay, so just like you would find, we had gardener snakes up, up home in, in Michigan. We don't have the same exact snakes here, but there was a snake in my yard in five years, one time. We have never had an alligator walk our neighborhood streets. So I'm just sharing that with you now because that is definitely one of the pests that people freak out about, and I understand that. Um, I have never personally seen a shark in the Gulf of Mexico. I know they're there. They own that. That's their home, not mine, <laughs> right? But I have never seen one. We've seen stingrays, we've seen manatee, and we've seen dolphin. Love that, right? So these are things to take in consideration. And I know that you guys are thinking this because you ask me every time we get on a phone call or we get on a Zoom call with people who are considering relocating. And it's what we wanted to know too, right? I was wondering, is a gator gonna come into my backyard? Because I'll tell you what, I don't know how to deal with alligators. It wasn't my thing. But you've never had that problem. Now, if you live in a community and you have a retention pond in your backyard, the odds are you could get an alligator in that retention pond at some point. The counties are great about coming and taking care of them once they reach a certain size. The thing that I have um, told my family and I tell everybody that moves here is whenever you see an open, fresh body of water that you cannot see in the bottom, assume that there is an alligator in there literally assume that it's there if you do that you're gonna stay safe you're gonna keep all your appendages your your um, your your dog will will live a lot longer I'm just telling you right now don't mess with the fresh bodies of water it's that simple now am I being um, very general about this and yes but for good reason because listen y'all don't play with things that don't belong to you right so when it comes to fresh bodies of water that you can't see 
just know there is a potential that could be in there. So keep that in consideration. Now, the mosquitoes are not nearly as bad here. The closer you get to the Gulf of Mexico, the less the mosquitoes really seem to bother you. But if you're in a low lying area that, that holds a lot of water, that is a number one place where those mosquitoes are gonna grow. The um, areas like Lando Lakes and Odessa and Wesley Chapel, they have more mosquitoes, but they're further away from the coast. The coast really provides us a lot of breeze, which is really cool, kind of holds off some rains too. But the very small things that are probably the most bothersome here in the state of Florida are what we refer to as no -seums. These are so small, they're tiny little flying bugs. Um, they call them no -seums for a reason because they're very difficult to see and they bite hard. Typically, they're found in wet, moist areas in shaded places. So like, a community park in the middle of the summer at 92 degrees you go you walk into the shaded area that's pretty much the zone that you're gonna find creatures like that so just keep that in mind we've got little lizards that run around all over the place they don't bother anybody they eat bugs they're your friend keep that in mind also um, but there are termites here so when we were talking about housing before it's amazing to me that homes that were built out of wood 100 years ago have si survived because of termites they're not terrible, but people definitely get them. You wanna get your home treated for pests for sure. And then um, palmetto bugs, which is a fancy marketing term for giant cockroach. <laughs> Those definitely can be bothersome. Um, when it rains really hard, they'll try to get in your house. So if you've got any um, cracks or openings, they come in and man, these things are like this big. They can fly by the way, they typically don't, but um, man, they can jack you up. So keep that in mind. So number eight on the list is you are going to have to give up your beach privileges during spring break. <laughs> and I'm saying that tongue in cheek, y'all, because it is going to be an at your own risk scenario when you head down to the beaches during spring break or during season in general. And I don't think I really realized how many people visit here. I mean, Clearwater Beach alone has over 4 million visitors every single year. And when we're in season, and that area is basically from the end of Thanksgiving to Mother's Day is when um, people who migrate south for the winter, we call them snowbirds here. When they migrate south for the winter, a majority of them come during that time period. Most of them arrive um, after Jan 1. Okay, so they have the Christmas holiday and the New Year holiday at home, and then they'll come down and they usually stay till right around Easter all the way up to Mother's Day. And during that time period, our beaches are busy, especially during the spring break time period. The college students, the families, when they start arriving the end of February, all through the uh, the middle of March, you know, it's busy here. So keep that in perspective. And if you're a local moving here to take advantage of our beautiful beaches, just understand you are going to have to share those beaches with all the people who help keep the lights on here, y'all. So keep that in perspective. It is something to be aware of. And number nine is unique because this is definitely something I was not expecting when I moved to the state of Florida. The, hey, we're in Florida phone call you get her. Hey, we're in Florida message you get on Facebook or Instagram. I'd love to connect. Yes, me too. Where are you? Well, I'm in Miami. Awesome, that's four and a half hours away. <laughs> or, hey, I'm in Destin. Well, that's six and a half hours away. Y'all, Florida is not a small state. So that's the first thing to keep in perspective because so many people visit the state of Florida every year. You'll get a lot of those reach outs. And I love hanging out with my friends and family, but not to drive two and a half hours one way to do it. So keep that in mind, that's gonna happen. The other thing is when you become the destination, meaning that you bought a house near the Gulf Coast, um, people love to come down. They wanna go to Clearwater Beach. They wanna go to St. Pete Beach. You all of a sudden, tend to become the tour guide and the hotel. Now we've got family members that we love to bring into our household. So I'm saying this tongue in cheek as well. Um, maybe all of your family members stay at a hotel, that's awesome. But when they come here, you're working your normal job and I love the fact that people visit us, but all of a sudden they go into vacation mode and they expect you to hang out with them, right? I can't have a margarita in the middle of the day. As much as I would love to, I can't, I gotta work. I'm helping people just like you relocate to the area. And our friends and family will pop in and they're like, hey, we're in Disney, we're gonna come over and hang out at the beach for the day, we'd love to hang out with you. And we love that, but it's not always an option for you, but you're gonna get way more of that because you now have become the destination. So just keep that in mind. And before we get to number 10, if you've gotten value out of today's video, please hit that like button. It lets everybody know that there's value here. And also don't forget to stick around because I'm gonna share my household items that you must have at the end as well. But number 10 here is the landscaping. Now, I don't know where you're moving from. If you're coming from you know, the Southern states, you might be familiar with the type of landscape we have here. But again, Florida is sub 
tropic. We have very unique landscaping here. Our grass is, is almost like rubber. We've got Bermuda grass and um, other different types of grass. Again, not, this is not my forte, but like they take a lot of work to keep up. It's not like the Kentucky bluegrass and the ryegrass that I was used to at home. The grass here is difficult to grow. It requires a lot of water and our, and our soil tends to be very sandy. It works really well because it, we have heavy rains you know, we've got tropical storms and it tends to filter through really quick, which is awesome, but it's not the best for holding nutrients or growing grass um, or other types of landscape. So just keeping that, that in mind, we've got beautiful landscaping here with birds of paradise and all kinds of unique things that um, are, are, are very unique to the state of Florida, but it can be a challenge to grow that stuff. It requires a lot of water. Um, and what I typically see people do is they'll, they'll run water either off of a well in their home, which our water Water has rust in it. I told you about that before, so you got to be mindful of that. You'll see homes that have like rust colors around the base of them, or the sidewalk has been stained. Usually, that happens in the older neighborhoods. In the newer neighborhoods, they're using uh, reclaimed water, um, and it's not nearly as uh, it doesn't have those types of minerals in it. But it costs a lot of money to, to to water your lawn here, so just keep that in mind. When it's 90 degrees and the sun is beating every day, it can be very difficult. It also, and again, that water can fuel other things like mold and mildew on your sidewalk, and since we're brought up that topic, I do want to get into those must have items, right? And a must have item around the house um, here in the state of Florida, there are a few, but I want to give you um, uh, my top ones right now is get a power washer, even if it's the most basic one, because rinsing your pool deck off or rinsing your sidewalk off um, frequently will help keep that mold and mildew at bay because mildew will tend to build up on the northern side of your property. Um, up north, we used to get it on the roofs because uh, the sun didn't hit there. We don't really have that problem as much um, here from what I've noticed, but we definitely get it on the sidewalks, your driveway, and those types of things, so keep that in mind. Um, it's also just good to, you know, keep things clean here in general. The other thing that I recommend you have is you definitely want to have a generator of some sort. So if you're gonna come here, whether that's in a full home generator, which is a great investment, or just something to make sure that you can keep the refrigerator, the freezer running, or the internet, um, at least one fan going, that is definitely something to keep in mind. And fans with batteries, those are a huge win here too, because what you're gonna find is if you go do things during the summer, if you can take you know one of those little Ryobi portable fans that you can slap an 18 volt battery in there, it is going to be a game changer for you when you're at the beach, when you're at ball games with the kids, when you're outdoors. Trust me, you definitely want to have good fans. I hope you got a tremendous amount of value out of today's video. I love doing videos like this. Let me know in the comments what you guys would like to know about when it comes to making a move to the area. And again, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out to me and my team. I'm going to put up two videos right here that are also going to help make that decision less stressful and easier for you. And until next time, go out and live that Tampa life.